Some of you women are so angry you don't want a man's attention at all, right? Uh, that's why, you know, there was a whole table last night all sitting alone. You don't want anything to do with a man. So, so your, your addiction now is turned into rage and domination. You don't even clock men. You don't even think that they are a worthy part of society or your society. That's how angry you are. Extremely angry. Right? You have no idea how much damage you're doing to the next generation of men. Huge amount of damage to the next generation of men. It's a big problem. One of the biggest problems on the planet is the intergender dynamics, the intergender emotions. The emotions from women projected at men and men projected at women. Now, a lot of you ladies are actually getting overcloaked by or influenced by women who have passed from the third world. Those women have a lot of anger and rage about how men have treated them. But many of you have treated men worse than that you've ever been treated by a man. And yet you don't want to acknowledge it. Right? Many of the women who are in the spirit world have been treated worse by men than they have ever treated a man. But because they do not want to feel their emotions, many of them are now being attracted to you and you are treating men worse than you've ever been treated. Uh, and this is why we have such a dark, negative women spirit influence on you. Because you are going along with these belief systems. These belief systems, a lot, for a lot of you ladies, it wasn't you that were treated badly, it was your mother or your grandmother or some kind of generation before yours. You see now, the youngest generation of women who have grown from being teenagers into adults, there are huge demands in them. Uh, the only men that they'll ever be attracted to are going to be men who basically do everything they want. Uh, not good for society, right? Anyway. Okay, so I wanted to have a chat with you about that because... Because basically, I'd like to see the air clear a bit. <laughs> and you have the choice here to help the air clear about bit by being more honest about your true feelings. Many of you ladies have a deep feeling of superiority over men. You only use men to have these feelings. Feelings... Avoided or pandered to, depending on which feeling. And many of you men are just going along with it. You, you're not exercising your will to love. You just go along with it and you give them what they want because you want some sex or you want some approval or you want some worth from them. or you know, You've got to look at what you want from them because that's the only reason why you're doing it. Right? And this needs to stop. Otherwise, do you think you're going to ever have a relationship with God with this addiction? I don't think so. You're more interested in having a relationship with the opposite gender than you are with God. And it's not even a relationship because it's an addiction. Here we go, Daniel. Hey, Jay, I feel I feel kind of sad that we don't actually know what a true brother-sister relationship is. And that seems to be what this is about. We don't know how to love each other as brothers and sisters. No, you don't. Because sex gets in the way. Because well, no, it's not sex that gets in the way. Not just that, but... <laughs> no, but it's not. Injuries. Sex doesn't get in the way at all. Real, real sex, as God created it to be, doesn't get in the way of a true brother and sister relationship. Yeah. Right? It's your distorted, manipulative view, view version of sex that gets in the way. Yep. Right. True sex is just for the other half of yourself, your soulmate. Yep. So that you know, if we had that feeling, there'd be no sexual projections coming out of us, and no sexual projections being received. And every person who tried to project at us sexually would automatically feel confronted. And every person who we, you know, if we were trying to get something from, 
if they had dealt with their willingness to give it, we wouldn't get it and we'd feel confronted. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a distortion. This is the, this is the problem, is that all of these emotions are distortions of reality. And if we had that education in love, then we would know. Yeah, if we had an education in love, we wouldn't do any of these things, right? We wouldn't do any of these things. No matter how badly someone in the past had treated us. So, so even if mummy was sexually abusive or dad was sexually abusive, we still wouldn't revert to this behaviour if we had a will to love. We wouldn't use it as an excuse. The majority of us are using our past as an excuse for badness. An excuse to be as bad as the people who have treated us. That's what we're doing. We're, use, we're excusing our behaviour because everybody else did it to us at some point. That's what we're doing. We've got to stop doing that if we want to love. You've got to, if you really want to love, you will be, be an example in love. You will not do these things. You will choose to not do them no matter what hurt you've had. You choose to feel your hurt instead. A person who starts owning their real childlike hurt doesn't do these things. Uh, can you see this is an indication that the real childlike hurt has not yet been arrived at for many of you? You're still in the facade, still having to deconstruct the facade. Because once you get to that true childlike hurt and feel some of the things you really feel, you would never perpetrate it upon somebody else. Right. But unfortunately, we have huge concepts that we're allowed to perpetrate these kind of things upon others because somebody else did it to us first. And that's a pretty negative and, and also very unloving thought and action that we take as a result. Yeah. Okay.